Good evening. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here, for sharing your love. Thank you for sharing your commitment to our friends and family members who have been lost. And above all, thank you for sharing yourself. I'd like to first introduce Angela Tirado. here in the back so thank you for your patience we're going to do our very best to make sure that everyone is heard and thank you all for that moment just a few seconds ago when you came to the aid of Angela when the microphones went out it was such a beautiful symbol for our our community steps up for each other and the song was even more beautiful when everyone joined in together. Thank you. My name is Sam Licardo, and it's my honor to serve you as the mayor of the city of San Jose. I'd like to read the names of our lost friends, colleagues, and family members. I'd like to ask our faith leaders to come up to the stage to light candles in their honor. And then I would ask for a moment of silence. Paul de la Cruz Mejia. Adrian. Belleza. Yes, 
Top to Jadeep Singh Gill, Jose Hernandez the third, Timothy <laughs> Timothy Romo. Michael Rudimetkin, Lars Lane, Abdi Alamandan, Alex Fritsch, please join us in a moment of silence. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce the Toy Howard, in addition to being a performing word artist, was also a bus driver for nine years here in the Bay Area. Welcome, Latoy. Can you hear me clear out there? All right. We've been sinking so fast into this everlasting current, circling memories of our past and only look through to see how long this will last. We have a generation yet to know patience, yet to know love, while monies are being stripped and lives are being struck. Tenacity is needed, persistence and agreement, perseverance through the storms with determination. This is an achievement. Can anybody hear me? Our world is an impeachment. Humility. Ask questions and love dialogue. Humility assumes I need others. Humility would rather be open and vulnerable than closed and independent. Humility believes what the gospel says about our desperate need for God. Christ is the mediator, full of hospitality. The one who knew you and knew me, this is what I call our reality. And so I say again, we're in a dying need of humility. But until I understand humility and let love speak, I'll forever be in this here reality. My condolences to the ones that have lost loved ones and friends. May this not be the end of us coming together, but soon this will be the beginning. Hope. Thank you. Thank you, Latoy. I'm gonna do my best and yell as loud as I can. And we're going to try to get through this together. Thank you all for being here in this moment. We've been apart for more than a year. Through a year of pandemic and isolation and tragedy. But today we're here together as one community. We're here 
because members of our community, our colleagues, our family members, our friends, our loved ones are suffering. And each of us feels our own pain as well. We're here to share our pain. We're here to share our love, to share our support for each other in the difficult days ahead. Healing for many will be a long, difficult path. We're here to express our commitment to one another to walk with our forlorn friends and family on that long road to healing. And we're here to express a singular message in our community. We will heal, and we'll heal together. I'm joined by co-workers of our fallen heroes, faith leaders, community leaders, and most importantly, all of you. I know that all my colleagues here from the city of San Jose are here, and I'd like to just acknowledge them if I can. They are standing behind me, and of course, you may not be able to see all of them, but I'll simply indicate Vice Mayor Chappie Jones, Council Member Sergio Jimenez, Council Member Raul Perales, uh, Council Member uh, David Cohen, Council Member Magdalena Carrasco, Council Member Deb Davis, Council Member Maya Esparza, Council Member Sylvia Arenas, Council Member Pam Foley, and I know Councilmember Matt Mahan wanted to be here, but sadly had a tragic loss in his own family and could not be. But we are here together as one community in one city and to express our unity with you. The President has declared a day of mourning and Vice President Kamala Harris called me yesterday to offer words of strength and encouragement to share with the community. She called, most importantly, to remind me that an entire nation grieves with us. And here in San Jose and Santa Clara County, we grieve together. And most importantly, we will heal together. Thank you again for being here with us. It's my pleasure now. my pleasure to introduce tremendous leader, the head of the Board of Directors of the Valley Transportation Authority, Glenn Hendricks. Okay, I'm going to try and see if we can hear, everyone can hear me. I want to thank everyone for being here. After a terrible tragedy of yesterday, it is so inspiring to see so many people out here to show your love and respect for the VTA family. And I just really want to thank you. I'm going to be brief in my comments, and I have two things to say. First is I have a request to all of you. When you're out and during your day around the county, and if you see a bus driver or you see someone with a BTA vest on, wave and smile to them. The, 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 the power of the smile is awesome. The second thing I want to do is I'd like to share something with you. In my family, we started a not a tradition, but uh, something we do, that we write haikus. And so as I went home last night, after the day, and I needed to deal with my own thoughts and emotions, I went ahead and wrote something, and I'd just like to share it with you. Our friends will be missed. Serving writers makes us smile. Nine will inspire us. Thank you all for being here this afternoon.
Thank you, Glenn. I'm grateful that John Courtney, the courageous leader of the Amalgamated Transit Union, representing the women and men who serve our community, is here. Thank you, John, for being here and for your leadership. Good evening, good evening, everyone. We love you guys and girls, and that's what it's all about. Be there, hold each other, love each other, hug each other, kiss each other when you get home on the end of the day. We're all we got, we're all we know, we're all we need. Please, whatever you need to do to get some support, I know I need it myself, but these aren't names to us. These are people we know and we love and we see them every single day of our working lives. And it really, really hurts down to the very core of our souls. So please, ATU, let's do what we do and stand with each other, for each other, by each other. Please, please, just love each other. Thank you. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to introduce the rock of ATU, ATU International President John Costa. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody, for being here. ATU 265, on behalf of our 200,000 members in the United States and Canada, our condolences go out to the families, your loss, to 265, your brothers, my brothers. We give you our condolences. I also want to recognize the labor movement yesterday, all the unions, the AFL-CIO, they all have expressed their condolences and help. I want to recognize the firefighters, law enforcement that were on the ground to stop this. The firefighters who are still on the ground giving our members support with their grief. But most of all, I want to send a message that we have to honor our brothers today and not forget what has happened here and not let this happen again. We can't sweep this under the rug. We need to. Treat this as if it's a drug and alcohol EAP problem. We need to do the right thing now and move this in and talk about this and recognize this mental illness and workers' violence. We need today to move forward for changing this and to stop this. We can do better. We can do better. My condolences once again to to all the families. I am so sorry. And 265, we're here. I'll be here all week. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking. Thank you. to be joined by many faith leaders. I'd like to introduce one now, representing the Gurdwara of Evergreen, Bhai Satnam Singh. Welcome. Khalsa, 
ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਹਰ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨ ਕੇ ਆਈਏ ਜਿਸ ਰਿੱਠੇ ਸਭ ਦੁਖ ਜਾਏ ਤੇਗ ਬਹਾਦਰ ਸੁਮਰਿਆ ਕਰ ਨਾਉ ਨਿਤ ਆਵੇ ਥਾਏ ਸਭ ਥਾਈ ਹੋਏ ਸਹਾਏ ਦਸਵੇਂ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਭ ਥਾਈ ਹੋਏ ਸਹਾਏ ਦਸਾਂ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹੀਆਂ ਦੀ ਆਤਮਿਕ ਜੋਤ ਤਨ ਤਨ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਪਾਠ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਦੀ ਦਾਰ ਦਾ ਧਿਆਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਬੋਲੋ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਹੇ ਨਿਮਾਣਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਮਾਣ ਨੀ ਪਾਣਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਤਾਣ ਸਚੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਪਵਿੱਤਰ ਚਰਨਾਂ ਕਮਲਾਂ ਵਿਖੇ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੱਲ ਸਨ ਹੋ ਜੇ ਵਿਖੇ ਸੱਚੇ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਜੋ ਭਿਆਨਕ ਹਾਦਸਾ ਵਾਪਰਿਆ ਹੈ ਗਰੀਬ ਨਵਾਜ ਉਸ ਹਾਦਸੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤਕਰੀਬ ਨਵਾਜ ਸੱਚੇ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨਿਰਦੋਸ਼ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਜਾਨਾਂ ਚਲੀਆਂ ਗਈਆਂ ਨੇ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਲਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਕਰੋ ਗਰੀਬ ਨਵਾਜ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਆਤਮਾਵਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਚਰਨਾਂ ਕਮਲਾਂ ਵਿਖੇ ਥਾਂ ਬਖਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਨੀ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਿਰ ਤੇ ਮਿਹਰਾਂ ਭਰਿਆ ਹੱਥ ਰੱਖਣਾ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਭਾਣਾ ਮੰਨਣ ਦਾ ਬਲ ਬਖਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਸੁੱਖ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਬਣਾਈ ਰੱਖਣੀ ਜੀ ਸਹੀ ਗੁਰਮੁਖ ਪਿਆਰੇ ਮਿਲਣੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਮਿਲਿਆ ਤੇਰਾ ਨਾਮ ਚਤਿਆਵੇ ਨਾਨਕ ਨਾਮ ਚੜਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਤੇਰੇ ਪਾਣੇ ਸਰਬਤ ਦਾ ਫਲਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ respected all we are here today to pay tribute to the innocent lives which we have lost on wednesday in vta rail yard mass shooting people from each community has come forward to pray for the departed souls as per their own customs we from sikh community all praying that may all departed souls rest in peace and may god give strength to the families who have lost their loved ones we would also pray to god please help people who are losing their mental balance and do not understand what are they doing there are many lives who are related to those innocent souls who love them and most importantly who are dependent on them therefore such acts not only take lives of few in fact they are affecting all those families who are related to them by some means let's create a society full of faith trust love harmony and peace where there is no place for hate thank you waheguru ji ka khalsa waheguru ji ki fateh please sound we're honored to have two great leaders from our congressional delegation here today first representing us here in the city of San Jose Congresswoman Zolotkin thank you so much for coming today is very heavy and with the victims families this evening as we come together to mourn it's so painful that San Jose has now joined hundreds of other communities as being the site of a mass shooting and that the VTA yard will be forever be etched in our memories as a site of tragedy the VTA literally connects our community it connects us and yesterday that connection was shaken to its core but today we give our love and our support to the grieving families and while we are heartbroken and shaken i believe it would be wrong to offer the only thoughts and prayers we need to recommit to action to end the epidemic of gun violence in our country. A 
America where there are more guns than there are people. America where you are 25 times more likely to be murdered than uh, someone in another developed country. America where on average 300 people are shot every single day. America, where as of today, more than 17,500 people have been shot by a gun and joined yesterday by nine innocent people, our colleagues, our relatives, our co-workers, our neighbors, our fellow Americans. Tonight, we're united in our commitment to our diverse community where we prioritize togetherness over division, hope over fear, progress over violence. While tonight we cherish the memory of those lost and we comfort the families left to grieve, we have to say enough. We don't have to be the only country on earth where mass shootings are a near daily occurrence. We owe change to those that we grieve for this evening. Let's do it together. Thank you, Congresswoman Lofton. We are also joined by a wonderful leader. We're also joined by a wonderful leader representing our South Bay, Congresswoman Erna Eschen. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I want to thank the mayor for bringing all of us together. Bravo, Sam. Bravo, Sam. We need to be together. Everyone's heart is broken. We're wallowing in grief. We're frustrated. We're angry. We can't sleep thinking about the families whose loved ones didn't come home from work. I'm here to pay tribute to all of you. Like so many others, I have watched and I have listened. And the entire country has watched the people of San Jose, California, and our region, and I think that they are in awe of all of you. For the police that went in, for the firemen that were there, for the mental health workers, for the brothers and sisters of the BPA family, for the government, for the private sector, of those that have stepped up with their contributions to the family. You have showcased your goodness to America. I want you to know how proud I am to represent a community that is full of love and decency, know and knowing that we are resilient people. We are resilient people. We will help the families come through this. We will do everything that we can. And that this city, and its people, and its workers will continue to show the way for the best in America. God bless all of you. Thank you. The loved ones we lost represent the diversity of our community and came from many different faiths as well. I'm honored to have our bishop in his Catholic Diocese of San Jose, Bishop Oscar Cantu, here as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, for the invitation to be here. Two years ago, when Gilroy happened, I mourned and I cried. Yesterday, I mourned and I cried. And we all have. 
the phrase that kept coming to me two years ago and comes back to me now is that we are brothers and sisters to one another. We are each other's keepers. I don't care what color we are on the outside. We all cry tears that are salty, and we all bleed red. We are members of the same human family. No matter how we worship or if we don't worship, we've got human dignity. And we need to respect and reach out to one another. That beautiful phrase that the Congresswoman shared with us, connection. That's what the VTA does for us. It helps us to connect. But we need to connect on a human level, on a level of compassion, on a level of care, on a level of love. I don't write high blues, but there was someone in our tradition who wrote beautiful, beautiful poetry. Poetry that is prayer. And he shared this one with you. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall lack. In green pastures he makes me lie down, to still waters he leads me. He restores my soul, he guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. You set a table before me, in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. Our prayers are with all of the victims of the Lord's We are also joined by Dr. Yusuf Al Shahabi from the South Bay Islamic Association. Dr. Yusuf, thank you for being here and sharing your thoughts with us. We are here to mourn 
I would like to carry you to carry to you the condolences of the Muslim community as we all come together to remember those beautiful lives that were taken for no good reason. There isn't a good reason to take an innocent in human life. And as we know that God has told us this through his prophet Muhammad and through his previous prophet, prophets before that, Jesus be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, Abraham, peace be upon him, and especially Mary, the mother of Jesus, that God chose to be the best woman that he had ever created. We all come together to remember the sanctity of the human life. We have our hearts aching for the family. We have that feeling of loss for each and every one of you. Your loss is our loss. Your families are our families. Why? Because we all come from Adam and Eve. We are all a single family. Our condolences come goes to you. Our hearts are aching for you. And we ask God to give you the patience. The patience. The patience that can help you go through these hard times. Peace be upon you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. responded in an incredible way to this horrible tragedy. Saw dozens of behavioral health workers helping assist families over the Red Cross Center. Of course, the county sheriff ran in immediately to halt the violence. And we're grateful that our county partners are here, represented by Supervisor Steve Chavez, who represents this area. I'm the Santa Clara City Council and also a board member of the Knowledge Transportation Authority.
in San Jose, he and his he and wife, Lena, contributed $100,000 to help our families who are grieving. Thank you, Chris. Representing our downtown district and also on the BCA board is Councilmember Raul Perales. And Councilmember Perales, like so many, has lost a good friend yesterday as well. Thank you, Councilmember Perales, to come forward to share your pain. Thank you. This has been tremendously difficult to represent this community and to also be feeling the pain that so many families, friends, loved ones are feeling today. My heart goes out to all of you I see so many VCA employees out here with us today, and I know how tremendously difficult it is for you. Can we give a round of applause to all of our VCA employees here today? any politician could say. Absolutely. Spot on. When I found out about the news of the active shooter at 7 a.m. yesterday, I immediately thought about my friend. I sent him a text message that has not been returned and will never be returned. I reached out to him and John Courtney immediately after that. What I didn't know is that John was standing right there, barely escaping death, watching my friend get murdered. Thank you, thank you John, for saying it best. We need to offer the help and assistance and embrace our struggling peers, coworkers, family members, loved ones, we need to open that up, ladies and gentlemen, and bring them in to help before this happens again. <laughs> Tragedy and violence like this doesn't get solved with more violence. It gets solved with love. And what I see here today, thank you. Thank you to the San Jose community. Thank you to Santa Clara County community for being here and showing your love with us. Thank you. We're also pleased to have a wonderful friend in our community from representing Temple Manuel L. Rabbi Dana Magat. Welcome, Rabbi Dana. tradition, we believe that each life is worth the world. Dear ones, we have lost nine worlds. And I don't know about you, but I'm done. I am so done with the lack of sensible gun laws. I am so done. I am so done with how insensitive we are to mental illness and we have lost another nine people. This goes on and on. And aren't we done? Yeah. Enough is enough. Enough, enough is enough. enough. It is my honor to offer this prayer to those that are grieving these nine worlds. O oh, offer of life, source and creator, grant a perfect rest under your tabernacle of peace to the victims of this massacre whose lives were cut off 
by violence, a rampage of witless aggression beyond understanding. Their hopes were severed. Their dreams were lost to brutality. May their souls be bound up in the bond of life, a living blessing in our midst. May they rest in peace. God of justice and mercy, remember too the survivors of this attack, witnesses of shock, horror, and dismay. Ease their suffering and release their trauma so they recover lives of joy and wonder. Grant them your shelter and solace, blessing and renewal. Grant them endurance to survive, strength to rebuild, faith to mourn, and courage to heal. Remember the families and friends of the dead and the wounded. With comfort and consolation, grant them your protection, your wholeness and healing. May they find hope and renewal. Heavenly guide, source of love and shelter, put an end to anger, hatred, and fear, and lead us to a time when no one will suffer at the hand of another speedily in our day. As we all say together, as one connected family, amen. Thank you, Rabbi. We're also honored to have Senator Dave Cortese here, representing us in Sacramento. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Mayor. The first thing I want to say is um, I am fortunate, fortunate to be here at a number of levels in the California State Senate. I was out of session today and I cleared my calendar to be here to be with all of you because this is where I felt I needed to be. And I want to speak, I say that because I want to speak on behalf of my colleagues who couldn't be here uh, because of the State Assembly. The State Assembly is in session. And Osh Kalra and Evan Lowe, the Assembly members from this area, uh, expressly asked me to express to all of you that their hearts are with you here today, not on the floor in Sacramento. You've heard a lot about John Courtney today, and rightfully so. Tuesday night in Sacramento, I was on a Zoom with John Courtney, representatives from SEIU and a number of other unions. And most of them, most of those representatives were asking for something, and rightfully so better conditions, better wages, better benefits, fair share of the state surplus that we've never seen before, but not John. When it was John's turn, he just said, thank you, brother. And I don't know if you'll ever know how much that meant to me as I sat there on the other side of that screen, but I'm gonna to try to express it today. No, John. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And thank you, brothers and sisters of ATU 265. Because you've been putting your lives on the line every hour of every day that you've been on shift since shelter in place and before then. And you shouldn't have to go to work worried about your survival, nor should anybody nor should the first responders that showed up to help you. Nor should, nor should Local 230 or Local 1165, the fire departments that you see out there. They shouldn't have to worry about somebody who is so unstable that they should not be in possession of a firearm in the first place. And we have to do something about that. And so we're here. We're here to heal. And I want to thank the faith community, the interfaith community. We've heard from representatives of, of all of the world's major religions just now. Thank you. They lead us time after time in healing here in the city of San Jose. 
They've done it for decades. But we can't heal over this. You know what I mean by that? We, we can't heal over the part that's most broken. We need to go to the part that's most broken and we need to fix it. And that's on me and that's on all the people that are standing behind me. And we're going to get it done. If I had more to say, I don't know what it would be. And so let me just close again by saying thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you all. You know, when families were suffering unspeakable pain yesterday, the district attorney's office and victim witness, victim assistance jumped in immediately to offer support and care. And I'm so grateful to all the members of the district attorney's team showed their humanity and none greater than Jeff Rosen. Thank you, DA Jeff Rosen. It is with heavy hearts that we are gathered this evening. Our hearts are heavy because we lost nine loved members of our community who had dreams and plans that will go unfulfilled. When these men said goodbye to their families yesterday morning, it wasn't supposed to be like this. They have family and friends who love them and miss them terribly. We love them and we are here tonight to say how much we miss them. My office and our partners began serving these victims, families, friends, and colleagues immediately after the shooting with advocates from our victim services unit and our partners like County Behavioral Health and the American Red Cross. Then within a few hours, we opened a Family Assistance Center for Victims, and we consider everyone who was a victim at the shooting, or had a family member at the shooting, or who was in any way affected by the shootings to be victims. We have flyers here tonight with information about our Family Assistance Center on North First Street, including the counseling, victim compensation, and other services that we are offering. We were there for victims last night. We were open all day today, and we'll be open tomorrow from 11 to 7. Sadly, we have learned and lived experience and expertise in America and in our community about what to do in these situations. We have followed the best practices and there are so many mass shootings in America that there are best practices to follow. That is a chilling indicator of the warped normal that is gun violence in America. The warped normal. To the community grieving tonight, I am so sorry for your loss, which is also our loss and my loss, and for the loss we are all feeling again, and 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 again. Thank you. Pastor Danny Sanchez has been working in San Jose for many years to help our residents overcome trauma and grief. And I'm so grateful for all the work he's done to help pull so many kids out of gangs here in San Jose. Welcome, Pastor Danny Sanchez. This hurts, friends. This hurts. People haven't even processed what's going on. There's a pain 
in our city. And the Lord laid in my heart as I was preparing to get up here that there are people here from the VTA and their family members and the friends, the people that were lost so tragically that you, to remind you that God is here to heal and to comfort you. I want to ask anyone here who works in the VTA to raise their hand if you have a family member family member that, that, that works for the VTA, raise your hand. If you have a friend that works for the VTA, please raise your hand. You know, I, my sister-in-law works for the VTA, and when I talked to her today, and I asked her, how are you feeling after this all happened? And she said, I don't know. She said, I'm a little angry. I'm really sad. It's really heartbreaking. I feel kind of scared. I also feel support and love. Everyone that's getting on the VTA is saying thank you and hi, and we, you know, we care about you, we hope you're doing well. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you today that you are loved. You are loved. And again, I want the VTA people to raise their hand really good because I want to see a special, special prayer for you. A prayer of healing and a prayer of peace and a prayer of love and a prayer of comfort. You know, this is just the first day that we're dealing with this tremendous loss. This is, a, this is the aftermath. And this is gonna go on a long time because as, as, they, as the Senator said, we don't get over it. We're gonna have to work together and get through it. So Jesus had a prayer and it's called the Lord's Prayer. And if you know this prayer, can you please say it with me? Our Father, who have a heart in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. We have uh, seen incredible signs of support from all of the members of our community in labor unions supporting our workers here in the city and throughout the region. It's great to see the fire trucks, the police vehicles uh, representing the South Bay Labor Council. It's the executive director, Jean Cohen, and I want to thank her for her incredible leadership in this difficult time. Jean. My name is Jean Cohen. I'm the executive officer of the South Bay Labor Council. We represent 100,000 working men and women, and we are here to support you, we are here to comfort you, and we are here to fight. I am so proud of the labor movement and the dedication of our essential frontline workers during a global crisis. There are hundreds of union members and working people gathered here tonight. I want to acknowledge the support and leadership that the labor movement has received from across the country. The AFL-CIO, California Labor Federation leader Art Pulaski, and we're joined here today by leaders from Alameda, San Mateo, Contra Costa, and San Francisco Labor Councils, because that's how we do it. <laughs> Yesterday, nine members of our union family were murdered as they attempted to start their day as public servants. These are our brothers and sisters, in the labor movement. And we are united as a community to lead with love, solidarity, and support for their families and coworkers. There is no vaccine for grief. The impacted families have lost their primary sources of income, are grappling with the devastation of burying their brothers and fathers and sons and are deeply in need of crisis counseling and support. As we've heard throughout the program today, mental health burdens need to be eased and we need to eliminate stigmas and barriers to mental health service. Our depth of sadness, 
Our depth of sadness and grief is tethered to gratitude for the generosity, action, and compassion dedicated and shown by so many. This is what we do as a labor movement and as a community. We show up, we donate, we pray, we organize, we make connections and we offer services all in the spirit of community and solidarity. As the days pass, we must focus our attention on what was broken to make sure things are stronger than before. This is our task now. We cannot bring our loved ones back to their families and our community, but we can heal and we will do that together. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. And thank you all for staying with us. We just have a few more speakers. Pastor Steve Clifford is the head of the South Bay Pastors Network, and he has been praying for the safety and peace in our city. Pastor Steve. There's a book in the scriptures that's actually for this time. It's called Lamentations, and it says, even in the midst of the grief, I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. And I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in Him. The Apostle Paul, when he wrote a letter to a church in the first century that was racked by unjust actions against them, he closed near the close of that letter. He said, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Determine right now. You've already shown that you care. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Now determine right now that you will take a step beyond tonight towards good, towards help, towards grace and love and peace. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, we pray again for these families. Would you please that have lost loved ones, friends that, have, that are grieving at levels where they can barely breathe. God, would you pour peace and grace into their lives? Would you surround them with the kind of support that will lift them up and carry them when they feel like they can't take another step? And then, oh God, we, we pray also for those first responders who have images in their minds tonight that they cannot lose, that will follow them all the days of their life. Would you give them peace? And then, God, would you give our city the will, the will to do good and not evil. We ask it in the name of Jesus, who was also senselessly killed. We pray in his name. Amen and amen. We have some information for those who need and want counseling from Casey Halcon with Victim Services in the County of Santa Clara. Casey, thank you for all the work you've been doing over the last two days, from you and your team.
I've seen grief, pain, frustration. But where there is grief, it's because there is love, deep love. The theme tonight is we can overcome evil with good, and we can overcome grief with love. But we need to be here for each other. And I would not be a good victim services professional if I didn't tell all of you to take care of yourselves, to lean on each other, to be sources of support for your community. We have therapists here on site. We have behavioral health professionals in our comfort care area here to the right. We have victim advocates on site. We are here for you tonight. We are here for you tomorrow. We are here for you in the weeks and the months that follow. You are not alone. Mental health crises happen and you need support, you need help, and you have the power to ask. And I am incredibly, incredibly grateful for all of the love you have shown each other in this community that you have left me witness in the last 24 hours. If you need us, we are here. We will always be here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Pastor Finney Abraham is here from Westgate Church. And he's our final scheduled speaker and we're going to have a song and we're also going to hear some additional words from a family member of a loved one who has been lost. So I wanted to welcome Pastor Finney Abraham. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Sam Licardo, elected officials, faith leaders, and uh, community members who are here. Now, let me start by thanking uh, the mayor's office for reaching out to faith leaders and making this truly a community event. So thank you so much, uh, Mayor. Our city woke up yesterday to the shock of a horrific tragedy that happened at the VTA grounds. I grieve, along with the victims and the families, and our city during this tragic moment. In our faith tradition, grieving is really the beginning of a process towards healing. Grieving helps us to see what we lost, what is broken in us, around us, so that we can start the process of healing. Today's vigil is not only about sharing our grief, but it's also about, also about sharing ways we can contribute to the healing of our community. So there are QR codes right here uh, that will lead you to a link where you can donate to the uh, victims' families. You can also find that uh, at the city's uh, website, uh, siliconvalleystrong.org. I encourage faith leaders who are here to share this link with your congregations. Several of you already have committed towards giving. Uh, thank you for that. We also have prayer and uh, grief counselors and uh, folks who are here uh, right as the previous uh, person just mentioned. Please share this information to, with folks you know who would actually benefit from this. Finally, one of the most valuable lessons that I have learned as a person of faith is the value of the other. Bearing the burden of the other, forgiving the other, caring for the other, showing compassion and kindness to the other. I believe the way forward to healing is to uphold the value of otherness among us. To be kind, forgiving, compassionate to your neighbor, your colleague, a stranger, or the very next person that you meet. Let's live this value out as we heal together as a community. Thank you and God bless you all. We could use some amazing grace right now, don't you think? Yeah. Linda Halberton is here to offer us amazing grace. Thank you, Linda.
So we say, praise God, 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 praise We've asked if a few family members would come up and share their thoughts with us at this time. And I want to thank them in advance for their courage in doing so. For those who may need some, some comfort care on the other side of the rotunda, we have water and other services here if you need to take a break. But I would like to invite family members of two of our lost brothers. First, Paul de la Cruz Mejia is represented here by many family members, including his father Leonard, his wife Nicole, and his mother Edna. And I wanted to ask them if they would come up and join us. We can escort you. prepared to do this. I never thought in a million years I would be standing here talking about this. Um, I just want to share some feelings I have as my feelings are just I'm trying my best. Paul was a wonderful husband and father who was full of love. All of you who know him knows he's full of jokes. He's has energy for life and always up for new adventures. I will treasure all our memories. He was a great friend, son, mentor to all. He was so proud of being an employee at VTA and all the accomplishes, accomplishments he made here. God took my best friend husband too soon and I'm wishing I could give him one last hug and tell him how much I love you. I love you always. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. I'm the father of Paul. And I'm also a veteran of BTA for 32 years. Back in 2004, I told my son to join the BTA as part-time so he can go to college. Too. In 2004, he was doing the uh, 64 line and I was doing the 25 line. And we would meet at Willow and Lincoln every uh, I forgot what time it was but that was way back 
but we would meet right there every night and we would just wave. We, we were happy. But that's short lived. He was laid off after six months. Back in 2012, he came back. Uh, he already had a nice job, but you know, BTA, he saw a lot of future in him at the BTA because of retirement, benefits, and all that good stuff. That's what I told him. Go back to BTA and make a career out of it. And then he did join the BTA club again. He, he, we really enjoyed each other, seeing each other, because he would be on the light rail, I would be on the bus. And we would see each other again, we would also wave again. And it was a happy time. But yesterday was the saddest moment of my life, and up to now. My son was a good father. He took care of him, all, all his kids, take him on vacation. Oh, they loved him, and he loved them. I'm gonna miss him. Thank you.